Hey y'all, so last week I didn't put up a video because the audio just kinda failed and I don't have time to record during the week so I couldn't do it during then, but enough of that. It's time that this culturally lagging YouTube channel catch up with the latest meme, Harambe. So I go on social media a lot and perhaps even too much that some would consider it a little bit unhealthy. And what I often see is that people seem to almost be worshipping Harambe like he's some sort of god or something. And so this got me thinking, is Harambe a religion? Let's find out. First, some background. So a lot of the modern world of religions first emerged in their popular forms, or just emerged at all, between 700 BCE and 100 CE, with the exception of Islam, which we are going to include in this video discussion today. And this period between 700 BCE and 100 CE is what some historians call the Axial Age. This is a time period when older religions like Hinduism and Judaism became streamlined, and newer religions like Christianity and Jainism and Buddhism started to emerge. And these religions probably emerged because this was the point at which more ideas were being exchanged between civilizations than at any previous time in history. And that's mostly thanks to trade, which by the way brings us to today. Many historians and futurists, which by the way sounds like an awesome job, are starting to think that we might be living through a second axial age thanks to the wonder of the internet where more ideas than ever before can be exchanged between individuals. And so these historians and futurists think that new religions are going to be formed through the internet in this new axial age. So to test this idea that Harambe might be a religion, I decided to look at some characteristics of previous world religions and compare them to the characteristics of Harambe worship that I'm seeing today. And I managed to narrow down to three characteristics that all major world religions have. Number one, beliefs and believers. So the central idea of a religion is that there need to be beliefs of the religion and there need to be people who believe in those beliefs. Without these, you can't really have a religion. Whether it's the belief in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that makes you a Christian, or just the belief in the fact that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet that makes you a Muslim, you believe in something and you are a believer of that thing. So that's just like the one basic thing that you need to even be considered like a belief system because you need beliefs. And both of those are two good examples of the other part of this criteria, which is that you need to have followers, and Christianity and Islam are the two most followed religions in the world. Number two, you need reasons to believe in those religions. So if the religion doesn't provide you with a reason to believe in that belief system, then what's the point of following the religion? The religion needs to provide you with some kind of story or statement or something that tells you what happens if you don't believe, or why you should believe, or something like that. Number three, rituals, practices, and ceremonies. Without practices, a religion is not really a religion, it's just a belief system. It's a communal thing, that's what makes a religion a religion, and they have to be shared practices. And that's why some would consider Confucianism a religion because people interact, but not Taoism because Taoism is like individual and eternal. So is Harambe a religion? Well, let's check it against the three characteristics. People who worship Harambe are believers in this supposed religion, but do they actually have a belief system? That's not quite clear, but as the followers of Norma said in Orange is the New Black, which by the way, great show, check it out. They weren't for structure, but they were there possibly for the lack of structure that their religion brought. So maybe belief in Harambe is not about forming a structure of belief, but instead about being free from the structure of beliefs that so many other religions have. It's a stretch, I know. And in that sense, perhaps the emergence of Harambe worship is an attempt by society to move beyond the structure that we've created and into a space that's just free. Let's look at the second criteria. Is there a reason to believe in this new religion? That reason is shown in the larger reason why Harambe became famous in the first place, the video in which that three-year-old kid fell into the gorilla cage. The first reason is that if you believe in Harambe, you won't be as stupid as the stupid parents who dropped their kid in. Don't be stupid, stupid! If you believe in Harambe, you'll get to keep living your life freely without the burden of stupidity. And not being stupid and being free are two good enough reasons to believe in this whole belief system. Thank you, Harambe worshippers. And three, are there any practices associated with Harambe worship? Well, I assume you're all familiar with this little phrase right here. Uh, it's covered with an annotation because it's, um, well, I, I rate this hashtag PG-13, the slogan, PG-13. Because, um, it's not, yeah, it's not appropriate for kids. But yeah, posting this everywhere it has become a practice of Harambe worshippers. It's so weird. So at the end of this little analysis of Harambe worship, I think we've reached the conclusion that Harambe is, in fact, a religion. And that we have moved beyond the era of structure into a new axial age that will free us from the hierarchical structures of all these religions. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see y'all next time. By the way, it's just getting darker and darker out there, and somehow the video still seems to be pretty lit up by the uh, screen over there. I have no idea how. This, to me, is very dark. It's like, it's like night, it's like evening. Let me, let me see.